In this Northern Brewer video, we continue our distillation series with a video about blending cuts after distillation, where a lot of the magic of spirit making happens. Once again, we're joined by Ilya from BSG and Still Spirits to sample the many segments that we pulled off during distillation. We taste the differences between heads, hearts, and tails, then blend and dilute a finished white whiskey to flavor and taste in an upcoming final video of this series. Before we dig in, if you've enjoyed our distillation series and want to make sure you see that grand finale, be sure to like this video, subscribe to Northern Brewers YouTube channel, and share it with your friends. Ilya here from BSG. Uh, I am back at Northern Brewer to continue our distillation series. Today we're going to be blending uh, the spirit that we created during our distillation with the pot still attachments and the Grandfather G30 at the RAR Technical Center some days ago. In this video, we'll be tasting all of the fractions that we separated during distillation on the pot still attachments and work through them to decide which portions we're going to blend together to then proof down and create the final spirit. If you haven't had a chance to watch the earlier videos in our series, specifically the one discussing pot still distillation on the pot still attachments and the G30, uh, please pause, go to the playlist in the video description and select that video so you can watch through that and you know what we're talking about here. On the day of distillation, uh, we did taste through these jars and gave ourselves some rough notes on where we stand on each range. Today, William and I are going to sit down and taste from the middle out. We'll take the jars we marked as keepers, as hearts, give it a quick taste, make sure those are still the keepers because you do experience palate fatigue, you are tasting high proof spirit, your palate numbs to it. So we'll go back, make sure that what we decided to keep is in fact a keeper, and then taste outwards from there, slowly mixing in heads and tails jars that we feel appropriate to add to the final spirit. In the end, we'll end up with a final blend of our spirit. We will dilute it down or proof it down to 40% alcohol by volume, and we'll flavor it. Before we get into this video, I'd like to go back to the reason we have three flats of jars here. Uh, and for that, we'll come back to the definition of distillation and why distillation creates what it creates. In distillation, we're using the difference in volatility of compounds to separate alcohol from a fermented wash. Lighter compounds take less energy to turn from liquid to steam and then recondense in a distillation. And so as we work our way through distilling a wash, we separate different compounds by separating sections of the distillate as it comes off, which is why we've ended up with three flats of jars, each containing between 100 and 150 milliliters of fluid. The distillation as a whole uh, can be viewed as three major parts, the heads, the hearts, and the tails. The first section of the heads or the first liquid that comes off the still is going to be called the four shots, and that is methanol, solvents, harmful compounds that can usually be recognized by a fairly aggressive solventy smell. Typically, it's about 150 milliliters per five gallon batch of wash, and that's discarded right away. After that, we began to separate each 100 to 150 milliliters coming off the still into separate mason jars. We did this to allow ourselves to later come back and taste through these to determine which we're able to keep and which are still not ready to be put into the final spirit. The rest of the heads may be considered for the final blend, and that can typically be discerned with a fruity, green apple kind of a note, at the beginning fairly aggressive, fading as you get closer to the hearts. The hearts is the sweet ethanol and really the portion of the distillation we're going to be most interested in and keeping. As the distillation transitions into this section, the taste really cleans up, becomes sweet and very palatable, and that section is kept in its entirety. As the distillation approaches the tails portion, uh, heavier compounds begin to come off, higher alcohols, uh, fla other flavor active compounds, and the aroma and flavor becomes more minerally and more oily. Um, there's typically a discernible change in flavor to let you know you're headed in that direction. As Tails continues to collect, uh, we can still consider a lot of this distillate for a final blend. You may have also heard the term feints used. This term is commonly used in two different ways. 
The first of which is to describe the very last portion of tails to come off uh, that is typically discarded, it is undesirable for the final blend, or to describe the portion of heads and the portion of tails that is considered for the final blend but not used, but is held back to be redistilled with a future distillation to recover the ethanol still present in it. This allows us to follow some basic guidelines or some basic rules of thumb as to when to look for the switch from heads to hearts and from hearts to tails. I can see uh, how that one was before this one giving way to the, some of that mm -hmm. flavor was just hinting into it. Yep. But I mean, this these two dot mark ones, yeah. they're going to be just similar to 17, but I'd say there's more, uh, the alcohol is more noticeable, more ethanol. Clean. Bitterness starting to get a touch more aggressive for me on the back end anyway. It's a maybe for me. Yep. To me, I got almost like tannins, and that's when it comes to bitterness and tannins, I can't. Mm -hmm. That's when I have a hard time, and that one's tannicky to me. That does make a difference. Like where it hits your tongue is oh, yeah. drastically different, which is interesting. That one I got quite a bit more bitterness. Your hand is warm and helps it evaporate a little bit, and you get a little bit of uh, those. Aromas volatilize, help you uh, get a good sniff of it. A little bit bitter, but kind of spicy, kind of nice and sweet. It's a nice cinnamon mm -hmm. quality to it to me. Yep. I think we can... Uh, That's tasty. This is the tails. It smells like oxidized soy sauce, and soy sauce is already oxidized. Also, if your stout smell like soy sauce, that's oxidized. That is not pleasant. It, it is. is not. <laughs> My dogs would probably like it, except for the alcohol part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one dog would like it, I think. <laughs> you got a boost out in yes. one of them? Noticeably, this is quite a cumbersome process. And there's a lot of jars here. We have to taste through a lot to determine what we're going to keep. Um, I like to think of this as of a learning process. And once we've done this a few times, we can easily say, all right, when the wash was created the way it was, and we distilled it the way we distilled it, what we're comfortable keeping is X percent alcohol through Y percent alcohol. So for example, on the front end, as the distillation moves along, and let's say we've decided that what we're gonna keep is 80% through 60% or through 55% alcohol by volume. Once we've determined that enough times, we can say, all right, when we're distilling a malt wash created the way that we created it, we can keep between 80% and say 60%. And then we can only fraction the front sections and the back sections and determine, hey, do we want to put a little bit more heads in? Do we want to put a little bit more tails in on this? Or, or are we satisfied with our distillate that we kept as hearts between that X percent and that Y percent alcohol by volume. But everything else, the front end and the back, the heads and the tails that we decide not to put in, what we're gonna do is retain those and add them to a future wash to be stripped out for the next spirit run. We do this because there's still plenty of ethanol in these because compounds don't come off individually, they come off overlapped. And so we're gonna retain that ethanol we're gonna add it into a future wash, distill it out. That way we again leave the undesirable compounds behind in future spirit runs and retain that ethanol and recover it in future distillations. What we did today is we went through all of the fractions that we separated on distilling day, decided that we were going to keep for our final beverage 19 of the 29 jars that we collected. We then blended them together to receive 1,825 milliliters of 76 percent by volume alcohol. It was quite interesting. The whole was greater than some of its parts. Uh, the, the blend came together very nicely. And uh, we then broke it down or proofed it down to 40 percent alcohol by volume, which yielded us four and a half 750 mil bottles of essentially white whiskey. Once we had those, we decided to flavor them, one with the Still Spirits Top Shelf Whiskey flavoring, 
three others with a variety of different bottle sized oak spirals and one we left or the half bottle we left as the control. It's great to be here at Northern Brewer to join the team and explore distillation as a concept and the Still Spirits line of equipment. Keep an eye out for more video coming in this series. The next will be on flavoring white spirits and tasting everything we created during this distillation series. Mm -hmm.